In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create this procedural cheese material in Blender. Now, if you'd like to help support me and this YouTube channel, then you can purchase this procedural material on my Gumroad store, and also you can get it if you join my Patreon. And another great way to help support the channel is by checking out my Blender procedural material packs. So I'm building up a library of procedural materials, so every time I create another procedural tutorial, I add it to my procedural material packs. And you can purchase my procedural material packs on my Gumroad store, and that is a really great way to help support me and this YouTube channel. So if you like using procedural nodes in your artwork, then definitely check out these procedural material packs. Or if you'd like to learn how to create all of my procedural materials, then you can check out my Blender procedural material playlist on YouTube. I'll have the link in the description in a card right up there on the screen. All right, so now I'm gonna show you how I set up the blend file before we do the procedural material. So I'm gonna press Shift A, and I'm gonna go right here and add a cube. I'm going to tab into edit mode, and then I'll press S to scale, and I'm gonna scale it out on the Y axis, and then I'm going to press Press three or click right up here to the face select and I'm just going to select this face. I'll now press S to scale and we're going to scale it on the X axis and I'm going to make it really small just like that. And now it looks like a slice of cheese. So I'm going to tab back into object mode and just kind of move this over. So I'm now going to press shift A and I'm going to go down here and I'm going to search for a cylinder under mesh. I'm going to tab into edit mode and I'll press S to scale and I'm going to scale it on the Z axis and we'll just kind of scale that down because I want to make a round piece of cheese. So I'm now going to press one on the top of my keyboard or also click right up here to the vertex select. I'm gonna hold down the alt key and select this ring of vertices. I can now press control B and control B is gonna add a bevel and then I can scroll my mouse wheel out to add more subdivisions and then I can click to place that. So I'll do the same thing down here. So I'll hold down the alt key and select that ring of vertices. I'll press control B to add a bevel and then also I can select everything and I'll scale everything up on the Z axis just so that it's a little bit thicker. And then I'll scale this whole thing up and then using the object context menu, we can shade this smooth. And also this object as well, using the object context menu, I'm gonna shade this smooth. So I'm now just going to rotate these objects and just kind of move them into place. And then I'll press shift A and I'm also gonna add a camera and I'll just move the camera to a nice spot, something like this, and then I can also kind of move these objects so it fits nicely in the camera's perspective. Now for the lighting, I'm going to be using this Abandoned Hall 01 1K HDR, and this is from polyhaven.com, so the link will be in the description if you'd like to download this free HDRI, and you can just add it into your world as an environment texture, and that way we'll get some nice realistic lighting. Now because the cheese is going to have little holes, I want to use the displacement in the node editor. So to use the displacement, I'm going to go right up here to the render properties. Now, if you want to use the displacement, you need to be using cycles. EV will not support the displacement in the node editor. So make sure you're using cycles. And then on the feature set here, you need to set this to experimental. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click right over here on the material properties. I'm just going to select this object and I'm going to click on new and I can just call this procedural cheese. And then I will click and drag and drop this material on this object as well. Now I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to go right right down here to the settings and under displacement, I wanna change this to displacement end bump and that way it'll use the displacement. And then there's one more thing I wanna do. I wanna go right over here to the modifier properties and I wanna click on add modifier and I'm gonna give this a subdivision surface. That way the displacement will have more geometry to work with. Now I wanna use the adaptive subdivision so I'm gonna turn that on and that way it'll just add more geometry where you need it. If you don't want to, you don't have to use it but I like using the adaptive subdivision. And then on the dicing scale, I'm going to set this to like a three. Now you can see that this cheese is now out of shape. And so to fix that, I'm going to change it from Catmull Clark to simple. That way it'll keep its shape, but it will still be subdivided. And then I'm going to click on this object right here and I'm going to click on add modifier. We can do the same thing. So I'm going to add a subdivision surface modifier and I'll turn on the adaptive subdivision. And then for the dicing scale, I'm going to change that to four. All right. So now that that is all set up, we can do the procedural material. So I'm going to click over on the shading tab. So I just have the 3D view right here. I'll go into rendered mode just so that we can preview that. And then I've added the procedural cheese on both of these objects. And then while we're working with the procedural nodes, I will be using the node wrangler add-on. So if you don't have that enabled, you can go to edit and go to the preferences. And then under the add-ons, you can search for node wrangler and just check mark the node wrangler add-on and I'll show you how to use it in the video. So to start off, I want to add those holes in the cheese. So to do that, I'm going to press shift A and I'm going to search for a Voronoi texture. 
And I'm going to drop the Voronoi right down here. Now using the feature from the Node Wrangler add-on, you can hold down the Control and Shift key and click on nodes and that is going to preview the node. And you can see that the Voronoi texture has these little circles here and, and that's what we're going to use for the little holes in the cheese. Now using the other feature from the Node Wrangler, I'm going to select the Voronoi and I'm going to press Control T and that is going to add the texture coordinate and mapping. Now we don't actually need the mapping so I'm going to select it and then I will press the X key to delete it and then I actually want to use the object coordinates in instead of generated. So the default is generated. You can see if I plug the texture coordinate up to generated, nothing changes, but instead I wanna use the object coordinates. And when you change it to object, now you can see that the texture is placed around the object more evenly. And then you can also see that the scale isn't correct. The scale is different, so it's smaller here and bigger here. That is because I just need to shift select both of these objects, and then I need to apply the scale. So I'm gonna press Control A, and I want to apply the scale. And now the scale is the same, so the Voronoi it will look the same on both of the objects. All right, so this doesn't really look like cheese, and so to change the colors, I'm gonna press Shift A, and I'm gonna search for a color ramp node. So we can drop this color ramp node right in here, and just Control, Shift, and click on it if you need to, and we can now change these colors, and that's gonna change the base color for our cheese. So I'm gonna take the white color right here, just click on that white tab, I'm gonna click on this color, and then I'm gonna make it a yellow color, a cheesy yellow color. And if you'd like to use the exact same color that I'm using, you can click over on the hex, and and you can type in FFC243. So that is the exact color that I will be using. Now we still have this black color right here and that is not what I want. So I'm gonna click on this black color and I'm gonna make this to a yellow color as well. So I'm gonna turn it way up and then I'll make it a yellowy color. But this color is going to be a little bit less saturated, a slightly darker and a little bit more towards the orange. And if you'd like to use the same exact color that I'm using on this one here, the hex value for this color is E6A038. All right, so that is looking a lot more like cheese. So I'm gonna take the color and I'm gonna plug that into the base color. And then again, the Node Wrangler feature, if you control shift and select different nodes, that is going to preview the node. Now cheese is usually pretty shiny. So on the roughness value right here, I'm gonna change this to a 0.3. Now to make this cheese look a little bit more realistic, I do wanna add a little bit of subsurface and that is going to allow a little bit of light to go through the cheese. So on the subsurface scattering, I'm gonna turn this value up to a 0.4. So this is the subsurface. And you can see that now a little bit of light is going through the object. Now we can change the subsurface color because right now it's kind of giving it a white tint, but I don't really want a white tint. I'm gonna click on this and because it's cheese, I wanna make it kind of an orangey color. And then again, if you wanna use the same exact color that I'm using over here on the hex value, you can type in E75400. So that's the color that I'm using, just a nice reddish orangish color. So you can see now just a little bit of light is being let through the cheese. Now this cheese is super smooth and I do want it to look a little bit bumpy. So I'm gonna press Shift A and I'm gonna search for a noise texture. Let's just click on the noise texture, drop it down here, and then I can Control Shift and select it to preview it. And then I wanna take the object and I wanna put that into the vector. Now I'm gonna leave the scale at 5 on the noise texture, but the detail I'm going to turn all the way up to max, which is 15, so lots of detail. So I now want to put the noise texture into the normal to give it just a little bit of bump. So I'm going to click and drag on the factor, and I'm going to plug the wire into the normal. Now if you control shift and click back on the final material, you can see that there's definitely some problems here, there's some weird shading issues, and that's because we need to convert this to normal data, because this is black and white data, but this needs to be normal data. So to convert this, I'm going to press shift A and I'm going to search for a bump node and we're going to drop the bump node right in here and then we actually need to take the factor and put that into the height because we're converting black and white data to normal data. So now if you look closely at this cheese you can see that it's nice and bumpy. Now cheese is usually pretty smooth that's quite bumpy so I'm going to make it very subtle. So on the bump strength here I'm going to change the strength to a point 0.03. So 0 0.03 and now it's going to be much more subtle and it is kind of hard to see so you could turn it up a little bit more if you wanted to 
but I like 0 0.03. Um, it's really hard to actually see it in the preview, but once we render this with more samples, you will be able to see just a tiny little bit of bump over the object. All right, so this is starting to look like cheese, but we don't have those little holes. So to add the holes, I need to press Shift A, and I'm gonna search for the displacement node, and I'm gonna click on this displacement, and I'm just gonna drop it down here. To actually have the displacement take effect, I need to plug the displacement into the displacement output here in the material output. Now, right now, we haven't really given it any information, so it's kind of acting really weird right now, but we need to actually give it some information to tell it where it's going to be displaced. Now, if you control Shift and click on this, you can see that we already have a map of where those holes are for the cheese. So I'm going to take this distance right here and I'm going to plug it in the height value of the displacement. Now, if you control shift and click back on the final material, you can see it's definitely doing something, but it's way too strong. So on the mid level right here on the displacement, I'm going to turn the mid level to zero. And then I'm also going to turn the scale down to a 0.5. So it's much less strong. And that is looking better, um, but I need to control that a bit better. If I control shift and click on the Voronoi text, Texture, you can see that it's not very contrasty and I want to make it much more contrasty so that it's more clear where the holes are and where they are not. So to make it more contrasty, I'm going to press shift A and I'm going to search for a color ramp node. Let's select the color ramp and I'm going to drop it in this wire between the distance and the height. So I'll just drop it in here and I can just kind of bring it down right there. And then I can control shift and click back on the final material. So now if I take this white tab and if I start to drag it way out, you can see that the holes are only going to be in certain places and that is because if I control shift and select the color ramp you can see that it's much more contrasty so where it's white it's going to be popped out more but then when it gets darker and darker it's not going to be affected as much by the displacement so if I control shift and select this you can see where the holes are it's not coming out but then the rest of the cheese is coming out so you can play around with this color ramp to change the shape of the holes but I find that something like this looks pretty good so I have the black tab all the way over here and and then I have the white tab about here. Now there are a few problems. Um, one problem is that there are too many holes and the holes are too small. So if you go right up back here to the Voronoi texture, I'm gonna change the Voronoi texture scale to a 1.9. So I'm gonna change it to 1.9 and that way the holes are much bigger and that looks a lot better. Now another problem that we're having here is the cheese looks kind of bloated and it's not really keeping its shape. And that is because the displacement wants to displace things out but not back in. Now, now one way that we can fix this is we can change the mid-level. So right here on the displacement, if you start to turn the mid-level up, you can see that the cheese is going to get more of its regular shape. So I found that a mid-level of 0.72 works pretty good, and that way you can see that it, the cheese mostly keeps its shape. It is maybe slightly bumpy on the edges, but it's pretty sharp for the most part. Now if you do it too much, you can see that there's going to be some shading issues, and that is because the mesh is kind of going through itself, so just make sure that you don't turn it up too far. And then you can also play around with the scale. So if you want the holes to be a little bit deeper, you could maybe change this up to like a 0.7, or you could turn it down to maybe just like a 0.3. You can play around with this um, and get it to your liking. I find that a 0.5 looks pretty good. Now, one other thing you can do is you can change where the holes are located. So right up here, after the texture coordinate, I'm gonna press Shift A, and I'm gonna search for a mapping node. I'm gonna click on the mapping, and I'm gonna drop it right in here. So the object is going through the mapping, and then it's going into the vector of the Voronoi. So if you now just take the location values, you can just change the location values and you can see that it's going to change where the holes are. So you can just play around with this until you get it to something that you like. And that is the finished procedural cheese material. So I just gave this a render and here is the final result. So that's going to be it for this tutorial. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And again, if you'd like to help support me and this YouTube channel, then you can purchase this procedural material on my Gumroad store in my Patreon page. And you can also check out my Blender procedural material packs. That's also a great way to help support this channel. Or if you'd like to learn how to create all of my procedural materials yourself, then you can check out my procedural material material tutorial playlist here on YouTube. I'll have all the links in the description. So thank you for watching and I hope to see you in a future tutorial.